All right, so I want to go over a simple new tool I added to Claude here. I previously covered running a command, so a single command line execution. I added another tool to run a script. And so I want to go over an example of this. And I was trying to think of a good demonstration of why you might want this. And I came up with a prompt earlier for another project I'm working on. And so I'm just going to paste this in here verbatim as is. I'll go through it here with you. I need to set up a new repository with a learning exercise, if you will. And I want to create it at this location here. After the get in it, I want you to then commit a fake security key to a credentials text file, then set up a fake project and add some commits after the first commit. So I want a little bit of git commit history here. And then I summarize by saying, I want to use this repo to test rewriting git history. I'll do that part later myself. I just need the initial example repository. All right, just to prove this doesn't yet exist here over at the command line, if I try to list out files in that directory, the directory is not even there. All right, so now let's do this here. Let's just let Claude have at it. So I'll go ahead and submit this here. Notice I'm not giving it instructions about what tool to use. It's going to hopefully pick the correct tool to use here. So first off, it's giving me a script that it wants to run here. That's great. Now it's trying to run that script. It's starting to write out the tool request here. If I want, I can review that here. It's going to be hard to see inside the script block, but I'm assuming it's the same thing it's got over on the right here. So let's go ahead and allow this for this chat and let's see what happens here. Okay, so it says it's done now. And so just to check and make sure it actually did what it said it would do here, let's just go over to the command line and see if that directory exists here. Wow, that actually exists. So let's change into that directory then. Look at the files here. Created quite a few files. Let's take a look at the git history here. All right, so we've got three different commits. We've got the initial commit with the credentials. Is that actually the case here? So let's go ahead and take that. Let's take a look at that commit here. There's the credentials or the fake credentials. Looks legitimate enough to me here. And then after that, we're adding in the various files here. I could look at this one, for example. You can see adding in some Python files, a little Python script here. So yeah, looks like it did everything I asked for. I've got my nice little commit history here that I can refer to, and I've got my example set up now. I can go in and practice or set up an example learning exercise to work with scrubbing credentials from a Git repository where you have multiple commits and you need to go back and rewrite all that commit history. So all I wanted to show here was by adding a simple tool to Claude, I can actually give it instructions to set up a learning environment that's actually rather complicated and it followed it verbatim. And this is actually the second time I've done this. I just did this this morning for the first time to see if it would even work. I was so impressed by it that I wanted to make this the example for my video. And this is the second time running through this. In fact, I can show you the first time this worked here. I come up a directory here into take one. Here's the first time it did this, and this one's different. So if I look at the files here, we've also got a Python file, but it's a completely different layout. In fact, let's split the screen here and do it over here. So let's do a tree here, and then come over to take one. We'll do a tree here. You can see these are different examples. Now I have two different repos to work with. In fact, if I wanted multiple examples, I could just run the exact same prompt more times and I get more example repositories. I could probably even specify I want a Node application instead of a Python application. Let's try that actually here. Let's come back here. Let's copy this exact prompt here, make a new chat, paste it in. Now, I don't know why it's not keeping my new lines between pasting here, but I kind of feel like those are important here. All right, so this time we'll do then set up a fake Node.js web project. So this could give me a different take on this. Let's see what happens here. Oh, I gave it the same directory, didn't I? Okay, I am going to deny that in this case because I forgot to change the directory. Yeah, it's going to try again. <laughs> Is it going to try again here? Oh, it's just giving me the command to run that I could run myself. Okay, let's do this here. Let's just change that directory. In fact, let me just tell change the directory to this here. So whoops, can you use this directory? We'll call this test scrubbing two here. Actually, we'll call this test scrubbing and Node.js. Pretend like the denial was because it was the wrong directory. Are you going to run it for me? The prod it to let it know it can actually do it this time. All right, allow once. Even with this curveball, it seems like it's going to work here possibly. I should probably actually review what it's trying to run here. Oh, this time it's using run command instead of run script. That's fine. That works as well. So now it's breaking its script down into multiple commands and running each of them one at a time since the run script approach didn't work. But now I guess it switched back to run script in this case. That's interesting. 
Is it actually trying to? All right. Again, definitely review the commands that it's trying to run here before you run them. It's doing some interesting things here to write out to files, I believe. Let's go look. I'm kind of curious to see what it's been doing thus far. Probably destroying my hard drive here. Let's go test, scrubbing, Node.js. Wow, it's got a lot of files here already. Let's just let it keep going then. Oh, it's done. Okay, great. All right, so now it's created theoretically a Node project. I should have been checking the commands that it was running. They roughly looked okay when I was prompted for them. Here is the directory. Here are the files on disk. And yeah, I've got my git log here. You can see I've got my initial commit with the API credentials. I could show that. Once again, looks legitimate. And then I've got commits here with some sort of app.js file. So I've got a node app in this example. So now I have three different repositories to work with. I could practice three different times and create three different learning environments for people to try out. So yeah, I can't strongly recommend some simple tools enough. Honestly, I like the idea of run script when it comes to a tool, but I wasn't certain I could come up with a really good use case for it until I was like, let's just put this to use to do something I don't feel like doing. Maybe that's where this is really going to be valuable at. Of course, you could write all these commands yourself, probably could keep up with some of the pace yourself, of course, generating an entire fake application that can take some creativity and time. Probably could do that all on your own though, but to have Claude just do it for you, maybe it takes, I don't know, 30 seconds by the time you prompt Claude and then another 30 seconds for Claude to run its script. Wow, that's like a minute to do something that might otherwise take maybe five or 10 or 20 minutes to set up yourself. So if you want to take a look at this run script or the run command tools here, hop out to my Git repo here, MCP server commands, or you can hop out and grab my NPM package here, exact same name here. If you set up Claude to work with this, which by the way, I'll show that as well here. Come into Claude's configuration in this directory on a Mac. The repo shows you how to do this on Windows as well. Inside of here, I'll dump out my Claude desktop config. So here's how I configure this. I added in, well, I should come up here. I have an M MCP server. It's called MCP server dash commands. You could name this whatever you want right here. That's just the name that shows up in Claude when you look at the tools here. I'll do a new chat here. You can confirm it's loaded by showing right here. See how it says run script and then it has from MCP server commands. This name right here on both of these, since both tools come from the same package, this is the name that's used there. So you can name that whatever you want. This runs with node. And then in my case, I have the Git repo checked out. You can do that as well if you want to check out and make changes to it. Or if you just want to use the node package, if you come over to the repository, I've got instructions for how to do that. Actually, it's down here as well. This is how you can do this using the npx command instead of needing to clone the repo to your machine. So yeah, give this a try. And if you come up with something that you think is valuable, let me know in the comments down below. I'd like to know what people are using this for. I think there's a lot of really good use cases, especially if you can just start trusting the AI or the LLMs to start doing some of the boring work that you might otherwise have to do. Trust it to do that, see what happens and see if maybe it can save you some time.